Hello! That was a bit cringy, and that is because this is the first time I've ever had to do some sort of intro like this. Usually you just see me sitting down, do a big one of these, but no! Today what we are doing is a first of many, or maybe a last one, basically an overall album review. You'll probably tell which album this is going to be, seeing as I've just done the last, I don't know, 10 videos on it, and that is Bad Omens, The Death of Peace and Mind. The cover art of the album is really fucking interesting. The woman's naked, it's like a, a lack of identity, she's been weighed down by a kind of depression, anger, feeling like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. I will put up something here just explaining it in full detail. We're going to start off with Concrete Jungle. The soft vocals come in, which in the end turns out to be the main focus of the whole album. There's a lot of soft vocals throughout this album. It sets the scene of where the album's going to go. It's not trying to give away too much too fast. It wants you to sit, really listen and enjoy every single part of it. Then in the end of the song, we get our first taste of a heavy breakdown. And that is the part where it goes, the fucking game. Then goes on again and says, I can't fucking believe that it was as heavy as it actually was because my god, as an intro song into the album it gives you a real taste of what this album's going to be about how it's not just going to be your typical over the top heavy metal just screaming, headbanging, whatever it's going to have some maturity to it and that is exactly what we got with Concrete Jungle and that is why I gave that song a 10 out of 10 it's the first song I listen to now on the album not because it's the intro but it's because I want to listen to it also it seems it's the best rated or best viewed video that I've done for Bad Omens so you know that always helps next is Nowhere To Go Go, which is funny because that's where we go to next. It starts off at the beginning with like a chilling piano or a keyboard vibe. His singing is completely different in this one a little bit. Not completely different, but it adds a different kind of tone to his singing. We get into the chorus, which goes hard, but in a clean way. And then it goes harder in a clean way. As soon as he mentions that speaking in tongue, like the whole chorus goes up. Near the end of the song, we get another heavy rendition of like some heavy music, really just making sure that we know like this is what you're in for in this album. And then it ends on like a more rockier note. I gave that an 8 out of 10. Third song that we listen to is Take Me First. Now I gave this one about 7 out of 10. It starts off really slow, there's more focus on the actual lyrics to this one. It also relies on a lot more electric sound. It carries on like the rock theme throughout but it's just as I said it's just a little bit more electronic. There's no like heavy breakdown or heavy screaming in this one at all. It's its own entity without the need for any of the heavy vocals over the top of it. Next song we have is The Death of Peace and Self-titled song on the album definitely show a lot more of their maturity in this song. They have like the electronics, the different vocals, heaviness, the cleans, the rocky elements, and it also gives you a little bit of reassurance. You've heard it as it's the first single, you're waiting for it to turn up just because you know it's going to be there and you know how much it fucking rocks. It's just like a really good overall sounding song which is exactly why I think they use that as the first single and exactly why I think it's a self-titled album, 10 out of 10, 100%. What it cost is an interesting one for me because when I first reacted to it, it took me a while to understand what was going on. It was like a prequel to Like a Villain. It has the vocals from Like a Villain, but like, you know, the end part where it is literally just doing like the bridge and then the outro. I like how it incorporates violins. It just shows even though it is a song connected to another song, it has its own identity and that's what I really fucking like about this song. So yeah, seven out of 10. Now, when you pair it with Like a Villain, it feels so much more powerful when you listen to what it costs and then to Like a Villain. From the beginning, when I first listened to this and first reacted to it, I wasn't 100% on this song, but it is really becoming one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm appreciating it a lot more. And the breakdown in it, it sounds so much better than I remember it being when I first listened to it. If you listen to the vocals, he's usually quite clean, but every now and then he kind of breaks out into like something a little bit more heavy, a little bit more screamy. And he kind of like brings it back just to clean. It's almost like got a villain aside that he's trying to hold in. And it ends like how what it cost started with, it really links the two songs together and makes it go full circle. Nine out of 10. This is the most controversial song on the album for me. I didn't really understand Bad Decisions. Probably the most experimental song on there. Very standout song, it's very monotone. I think it really kind of keeps it cool. But I feel like this song kind of like targets a different audience to what Bad Omens fans usually are. I'm not saying they don't like it, I'm just saying that's not what they expect from Bad Omens as a band. We're talking about maturity, we're talking about them kind of like opening up to like a wider audience. I genuinely think they've done that. I appreciate it, I understand it. I actually had this down as a four out of 10. Four out of 10's a little bit harsh, so I'm gonna push it up to a five out of 10. Generous like that, you know, you know. This song, just pretend. Now this song I've rated as a 9 out of 10 now because I can't not think of the bridge. It starts off, it keeps a slow chilling atmosphere, like the whole album is very cold. There's just some sort of chilling ambiance to the whole album and I really felt it in this song. It also shows off a lot more of his like vocal range, they have an explosive chorus but the transitioning between the different vocal types is really good and it's something I've really enjoyed throughout this entire album but I genuinely believe that this song really shows off the most. The bridge is amazing where it's just like kind of no. Down, would you 
Say I'm worthy. Obviously, I can't sing. It really just sticks in your mind, like the repetitiveness of it and like the echoing of the voice. It's just really calm, soothing, but it gets its point across. Another nine out of the 10 song, oh, nine out of the 10, is The Grey. Now, this is one of my favorite singles they brought out. I really, really enjoyed this song. It comes in with some quite heavy riffs, electronic synthesizers, hearing all of that, and then it goes to quite a high voice, like quite high pitched, but you know what? It works. It kind of really stands out there for me, and the chorus, is one of my favorite choruses ever and the transition between the chorus into the verse and the second verse is just beautiful and I could listen to this song over and over and over again. Who Are You is another teasing calm song. It shouldn't really sit where it is. Once again, that's just my opinion. I just didn't feel like it was the right time for that song. I feel like even though I can appreciate the music behind it, it just doesn't stand out for me. I can't really get behind it just being so repetitive and quite simple. I like the music accompaniment with it, but as a song for me, I'm just gonna count it as an intermission song, like a break in the album, just to kind of like regain a sense of kind of like calmness and focus. I'm gonna move it up to a six out of 10. For somebody else, it's the most percussion orientated song, I would say. I said throughout the whole album that like, you know, they're adding so many diverse instruments all the time. A lot of drumming, a lot of clicking, a lot of like wood sticks hitting together. I prefer this soft song compared to the other soft songs on the album. Now we start getting back into the album a little bit more. We've had our little break, we've had our rest, we've had their chances to show off like different directions that this band can go in and we are on to I Don't Want The Money. Got a very boppy start to the song. It's kind of like waking you up after you've listened to all the calm songs. Feels like it's got some 80s synths in it. Like it's very electronic. That's what I mean with the whole boppy side of things. The flow of the vocals and the effects on the vocals stand out really well to me. And the transition from those vocals into kind of like the hard vocals in the chorus, like you don't see it coming. And that's what I like about this album. You don't see anything they put out here coming unless it was actually the singles. They give us like a bit of a heaviness in the bridge, then they have like a calming part of the bridge and you're thinking, oh really? Was that it? Was that all we were gonna get? But no, third chorus comes in hard and then the outro is really quite heavy and it's quite thrashy. It's just a brilliant song. I'd highly recommend listening to it and like, I don't think I reacted to it well enough when I did the video, nine out of 10. What do you want from me? I saw this as a tribute to all of the synths that they've used in this album completely. It's almost like showing off the stuff that couldn't fit in the other songs, but you know, it was too good to kind of just miss out. It's kind of an intermission song, but it has enough to kind of stay on its own two feet. It really incorporates the heaviness of the guitars and really blends it really well together. And it does have like a cracking fucking breakdown in it as well. The distortion on the guitar in this song is so crisp and it fits in so well. I've really got, I really appreciate that. That was really good. Really enjoyed it, seven out of 10. Two songs left and the song I'm about to talk about now is quite controversial in my way. Now I fucking loved Artificial Suicide. Nine out of 10, listened to it as a single before the album came out. I really liked how at the beginning of the song, it's very slow, very quiet, stuff we've already heard from Bad Omens in this album already. And then it drops. You can hear the chugginess of the guitars in the background. And I feel like this song is a homage to kind of the other albums they've done and the fan base that really want their heavy side. It's giving appreciation to the old fan base, but it's also including maturity. The lead synth over the actual intro in the guitars. It's like a siren sound. It sounds really good. Because it was released as a single, did it give off the wrong impression that the album was gonna be like that? If you release it as a single, everyone's gonna think, oh yeah, they got one heavy song. I'm sure there's gonna be loads of other proper heavy songs as well. If they'd left that out and kept it kind of like a secret until the album was released and then people going through the songs thinking, okay, well yeah, this is a different direction. Yeah, it's not what I was expecting. And then suddenly, boom, Artificial Suicide comes out. Then you're like, yes, they are still doing what they were doing. While instead, because we've already listened to it, we are literally just thinking, okay, yeah, but when's the next one coming? When's the next one coming? Would it have been appreciated a lot more if it was kept secret? Or was it that it was sent out as a single to help create hype for the album, even though the whole album isn't really Artificial Suicide, if you know what I mean? Artificial Suicide is quite, on its own, like there's heavy elements in all the other songs, but that one is just strict heavy, nothing else, just, just heavy. Calm bits a little bit, but mostly heavy. Of course, it's a nine out of 10. We get onto the final song, the outro song, Miracle. Starts as if you're waking up from blacking out. You hear like this kind of ominous choir coming out and you listen to it a little bit more and it kind of wakes you up and it you know gets you a little bit like restless and that. The drums come in, you wake up a little bit like, whoa, what's going on? It kind of gives you like a, a false sense of safety. It starts off singing quite clean and then it warps and you're kind of like, whoa, what the hell was that? Should I be worried about that? Is this cool? I don't know, like, ooh. Drums lead the way like concrete jungles, parallels between the intro and the outro, which is really cool. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the breakdown hits. You realize it's not safe. You realize, whoa, this is fucking heavy. What the fuck is going on? And then after the breakdown, he tries to go back to kind of be normal and chill. The chorus is really cool and I like the horns where it's like da -da 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 -dum. suddenly we get the heavy outro just after the heavy third chorus where everything's complete, everything has turned into what it should have been 
and the heavy outro is just sublime for me. It really kind of like gets all that last bit of energy that you've listened to and experienced throughout the album just out of your system. You've listened to it all. It's perfect. It's brilliant. It's another 9 out of 10. That is basically my whole review of the album. If you add up all of my scores out of 10, there's 15 songs, you divide it by 150, times it by 100, you get around about 7.8, 7.9, whatever. So let's just say that the album as a whole was basically an eight out of 10 album. That's a very solid album. If songs that I didn't like grow on me, then great. If not, it won't be any less than an eight out of 10 album. Once again, it's just my opinion. You might think differently. You might think I'm completely wrong in things. You might think I'm a gatekeeper. You might think whatever. Let me know down below what you think about this album. Let me know about what you thought about my scores. If you think I went too high on some, too low on some. You know, just I just want to know what everyone else thinks as well because we've had quite a lot of discussions throughout the whole playlist that I've been putting out. But yeah, that is my final thoughts on The Bad Omens, the Death of Peace of Mind album. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed what I've done here, if you enjoyed what I've been doing, then please let me know down below. If you want to see more kind of like review videos like this, let me know down below as well. Thank you very much if you've sat here and listened to all of this. Please like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next video, whatever it may be. Thank you very much for watching.